Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Evan. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Also check out my ECS and Amazon affiliate link down below as they help out the channel at no cost to you. And all the commission that I get from these affiliate links goes right back into the channel. So if you guys could help me out and use those links when shopping on Amazon ECS, that'd be much appreciated. So in today's video, I wanna go over a tool that anyone with an F series or G series BMW and even some E series BMW needs this tool. Now, what am I talking about? It's actually a coding application called Beamer Code. It is so good. Now, many of you guys know that I've been using Carly for so long and I'm not discrediting Carly for anything. They each have their own unique purpose. Carly's more, I would say, for some of the older cars and overall it does all different brands, other German brands, while Beamer Code and Beamer Link is specifically for BMWs and Minis and obviously the new Supra. But with that being said, Beamer Code is for coding, Beamer Link is for diagnostics, and the thing about Beamer Code is it allows you to do some expert coding that goes into expert mode in some of the actual parameters that you'd edit inside of eSyst. Now, to make this experience even better, I recommend using this specific Mod BMW ENET adapter. It's wireless and wide, and the reason why I recommend it is because it supports so many applications. And another thing, if you guys plan on coding your car with Beamer Code or Beamer Link, you guys need to use a Wi-Fi or ENET adapter. It's so much quicker than the Bluetooth adapters. And it's just due to the way the protocol works. Bluetooth is slow, Ethernet and Wi-Fi is really fast. So this adapter is super good, absolutely love it. So that is why I went with this specific mod BMW ENET adapter. One, because it's an ENET cable, and two, because it's wireless. It supports other applications besides Beamer Code and Beamer Link. I used it for MHD, it works for X-Delete, it works for XHP if you plan on tuning your car. So it's just an overall good adapter. It's it's used in multiple applications. You can even use it in eSys and ISTA if you wanted to, whether you wanted to use it wirelessly or wired. So that's why I recommend using this specific adapter. It makes the experience so much better and so much quicker. So today I'm just gonna go over basically all the cool coding options you can do on an F and G series. Now I'm showing you on my 2016 BMW F10, depending on your model, you may have more or less options to code. And I know the G series has even more options to code than my F10. But with that being said, this tool is definitely a must have if you wanna get into coding. And the best part is you can do some advanced coding, not just changing the options. It actually goes into the, I think it's called FDL. And those were the actual parameters you'd set in ESYS. So if you wanted to do some more custom coding, like I enabled anti-dazzle headlights on my F10, which essentially um, is allows the high beams to not blind people because I have adaptive LED headlights. But if you, want to, if you want me to make a video on how to do that with Beamer Code, I can, but that's just an advanced coding option you can do the only one thing you can't do inside of beamer code edit a car's vehicle order because that is pretty dangerous and you can screw things up but with that being said let me throw you guys in the tripod and show you all of the options that i coded to my bmw f10 all right so we're going to start off by picking our car in this case it's a bmw 5 series i already connected this adapter through wi-fi so it's a bmw 5 series and it's a f10 so we're gonna click continue and it's gonna read now watch how quick it loads if this was Bluetooth, it'd take so much longer and it loads these control units super quick and then you can see all the different control units that we have. So we're gonna start off by going to the iDrive system. So that is under, in my case, it says head unit. So that's what you'll go under is head unit. So click head unit. And then it's going to make a backup and then read everything. You saw that lightning fast, super quick using ENET, or in this case, it's a Wi-Fi ENET cable or adapter. But let's move on to what we changed in here. The best thing that I think for the head unit to change is definitely the start animation. I changed that to the M1 since I do have the M Sport package. I think that's pretty cool. And then we also changed the tire pressure monitor system to show both the temperature and pressure. Unfortunately, mine cannot show the temperature and pressure just due to the system I have. Mine, it doesn't actually have TPMS sensors in, which is really weird for 2016. I thought all 2016s had TPMS sensor, but I'm just using the ABS system. Not sure about that. I need to do some more research on that. But the other thing I like to do is um, rear view camera zoom, which is essentially if you're putting a tow hook. I just liked it. I don't plan on putting a tow hook on this car, but I changed that to active. And then also the other thing I enabled is sports display. My already was active from the factory, but if it's not, you can enable sports display super easy. 
Then you can also pick the color. As you can see, it's just red. Next thing I changed is the startup warning. I set that to not active. So startup warning where you have the legal disclaimer that pops up, I set that to not active because I don't want to see that. All right, moving on to the next items that I coded that I think is super cool. It's under the combi or instrument cluster. Now, some of these I couldn't actually code to my car um, just because I have the 6WB display, which is the fully digital dash. But one thing you can code is a digital speedometer, which is right here. You can choose that. I just have it an unassigned value. The other thing you can have is a BMW startup logo. You can pick the M performance one that you want and you can just leave one up all the time. Again, I can't necessarily do this because I have the W6B dashboard, so it doesn't work for my case. Next thing, we're gonna go into the cast module. Now, one thing I really dislike about my BMW F10 is the fact that the stop start feature restarts every single time. So you can change that. Um, I leave it on memory, but you can have it shut it off by default every single time the car starts but I just leave it in memory mode. So memory is active. Whatever I leave it on, it stays on and I don't have to touch it. That's how I leave my start stop button. Next thing I added convenient closing. Convenient opening is already enabled, but convenient closing is where the windows will shut with the key and the sunroof by default in the US, it is not allowed to do that. So I changed that to active and I also enabled comfort closing delay. I did 1.5 and I'll tell you why I did that in a second. Basically right now, my mirrors close if I hold and press the lock button. Not if I just press it, if I just press it, it just locks my door. And if I press and hold it, it does my mirrors like my E46. And I did this for a reason because I think it's gonna wear out the motor. So I only, close the windows, the mirrors sometimes with the key, depends on where I am. And I really only use it for a function. So the other thing to enable your mirrors to close and open automatically when the car unlocks, you need to enable this value right here. Fold and unlock mirrors automatically, one of two. There's another one that we need to change in the footwell module. So that needs to be enabled. So the next one we need to go under the footwell module read that and you can see it's reading super quickly and then in here this is where we have to change the other part of the mirror we need to set the mirrors to fold and unlock mirrors two of two automatically that's the other option to allow your mirrors to close and open with the car and then you need to enable fold mirrors with convenient closing and then you can have thresholds for when the mirrors automatically fold and unlock which is pretty cool but the other thing i want to show you is this fog lights off with high beams. I really like that my fog lights on and I don't like them to shut off with the high beams. It is technically illegal in my state and country, but I still did that. And it's kind of a double negative. So it says fog lights off with high beam. You set that to not active because if it was active, it would say fog lights off with high beams. And obviously we want that enabled. The other thing I really like in here is the one touch turn signals, where if I press the turn signal button once, just a soft click it will blink five times and it's really good for when i change lanes so that's super useful the other thing i actually wanted to show you in the footwell module is voltage monitoring so if you guys were to under here we have all the different voltage monitorings low beam high beam um fog lights turn signals if you swap any of these bulbs out with leds and the car originally had halogens in place there you'll throw a code on your dash and your car will just have a code in its computers so you can disable the voltage warning and pick that it has an led and it will get rid of the cold check for it so that's pretty cool next thing which is really cool my car because it's m sport package already came with this but if we go under transmission we can enable automatic sports transmission and essentially that is sports plus where it's in sport mode and it disables traction control so your wheels can slip a little which is really cool now the last option that I want to go over to code now there's many more options like I said but the last option probably one of the most important options and I don't know why this is not coded from the factory well I think I have my suspicions why it's not coding but that is to be able to close the tailgate with the remote and the actual button inside the cabin it only works for opening it it's so stupid if you have an automatic trunk it will open it but it won't close it you have to use the button in the back to close it and you can enable that super easy with beamer code so if we go under tailgate module we click on it loads up we have closed tailgate with remote set that to active closed tailgate with button in driver's door set that to active and then closed tailgate without long press so if you just want to tap it i don't like that i rather just be able to 
do the long press and it shuts. But I don't know why BMW does not code this from the factory. It's something so stupid that if I'm in my car, if I open up the trunk in my car for someone to get something out and I want to close it, because some people don't know that you, there's a button and try to push it down. And I don't want them to push it down with an electronic motor. It's so stupid that you can't press that button. I understand it's probably about the windows thing where it bypasses the safety and you want to make sure that you're not closing it on someone. I completely understand that, but like, God, it's such a simple thing. And I really like the feature. I honestly use it all the time. If someone opens, I open up the trunk for someone and they take something out and then I shut it. So don't understand why that's not there. But yeah, that is all of the coding functions. Now there are more. So if I go back, there's so many different modules that you can code, especially in these new F series. There's stuff for air conditioning. Um, I know you can independently pick your heated seats, how hot each setting gets. There's also the headlights you can change. If you retrofit paddles or heated steering wheel, you can enable that or disable that. There's different driving modes you can enable. Um, like you can set to start an eco, eco mode if you want to save more gas, change the headlight, different things for the angel eyes. You can increase the brightness of the angel eyes. Now I'll tell you why the reason why I'm not showing you that is because I don't believe it's good for the car. And I think you're going to burn out the headlights, especially with these led headlights. They're about 2000, the headlight. I'm not going to do that. Yes, it would be cool, but they're way too expensive to splurge to just make my angel eyes brighter when my low beams are on or something stupid or in the daytime. It's just not worth it for me in this case of how expensive these headlights are. So I leave that at factory, but if you guys want to know any other coding things, if I missed anything that you think is cool, let me know. If you want to see more advanced coding videos on the F series, like I said, I coded anti dazzle headlights in VLD, which is variable light distance, I think. And essentially, variable light distance is where the faster I go, the more the headlights point up and out. So, city driving, they point down and wide so you can see people. And when you're driving on the highway, they kind of point up a little higher and disperse out so you can see where you're going and see further down the road. And then obviously anti-dazzle headlight is the function where I can leave my high beams on. And when I'm going down the road, it will independently control each high beam. Eventually it will kick it out. So you're not blinding the person in front of you, kind of making a tunnel where they can't see the high beam and eventually shut one off if they're coming at you. So you don't blind them. I can make a video on that. It's super cool. Really like the feature. I just coded that and it kind of works with the automatic high beam assistant that comes on some of the newer BMWs. But if you guys have anything you want to see coded, let me know. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did this video for my E series and it really did well. A lot of people seem to like all the options I coded on my E46. So hopefully people like to see what I coded on my F10 and all the coding options that are out there and how easy it is to code, especially you can code right off your phone and you can code advanced coding options. If your car does not support Beamer code, I will drop a link down in the description for Carly. Carly is awesome too. It's super simple to use. Same way it supports iOS and Android and supports some of the older e-series and it supports just many other manufacturers i used it on my girlfriend's volkswagen i used it on a toyota before and a mercedes so it's able to scan all the different modules which is great so it's a very good alternative to beamer code and can do other things but like i said that's more for the older e-series if you have a g series and an f series that is where beamer code shines since it supports so many different options and allows for advanced coding. So if you guys want to check out Beamer code and Beamer link, I'll have it linked down in the description. I'll also link the mod BMW Enet adapter that I think is an absolute must when coding your car just because it's super quick. I'll have all that linked down below. If you guys have any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button and check out all my links down below as they help out the channel at no cost to you. All the commission I get goes back into the channel. So thank you guys so much for your support and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.